It's time for Florence Ballad A36 Reviews. The first review of 2021. And because it's winter, we're going to be reviewing something on here that may help you uh, if you're struggling in cold weather. We're looking at this. I'll explain more what it is. And you're watching Florence Ballad A3060 on film. So, does this look familiar to a lot of you? Well, if it does, that's because you're right in guessing what it is. This here is what is called an electric radiant fire. Many people will probably remember their grandmas, their aunties and uncles, and gran or just all grandparents in, t in general. Some people may still have them using these in their front lounge. These were known for their flame effect that they have. So it has like a light in there and it makes a nice reflection that looks like fire. And of course it's got two elements, like your standard electric heater, and it gives a very powerful heat. We're gonna be reviewing this one because now that it's January, well now it's February actually, we're still in the very bitter cold months of winter in the UK and all around the world as well. Now it's a time for when your central heating isn't always as effective as it should be even though you have good central heating if you do but if you don't this is also something to invest in. Unfortunately these are no longer sold brand new in stores uh, it's due to I think health and safety regulations I will explain more about it it's a bit of an over exaggeration I believe but uh, hey, hey ho that's the way our law goes um, but you can still buy them online uh, this one here is made by Dimplex a very well known uh, heating and cooling brand who are known for other electric heaters and fans as well. This one's made in Ireland, or they're known as Glen Dimplex. Uh, but there are various other brands who made these. Um, I think Bumark were another one who made these fires. They're very good, and I'll tell you, I've had this one since October, and it's the best thing I ever got. For this. It's in my bedroom. Now, normally you would use one of these for heating your lounge with. I have it in my bedroom, but I have used it downstairs at times. We'll have a little insight into how it works and um, I'll see, show you how, just how good this thing is at heating this room. It heats it better than the central heating and I have to, I run it for less. So start by a little look at the, at the actual electric radiant fire itself. So this is your log. It's just, it's just, it's just decor. It's not actually wood. It's like a sort of plastic. Same with the plastic backboard, that's meant to symbol like what you have on a fireplace. Uh, they did differ on design. This is the Brockenhurst model, BRK20, but they also did a like Glen Isla or something, Glen A, I think it was called. Um, and there's also Glen Ross and a Yeominster, which is the Yeominster is the most commonly known one. So underneath here, uh, this, gr this is your safety grill to stop you going straight into it but you can lift this up to access these for cleaning so you basically take these off now if you're buying one of these you most likely will be buying it second hand because as I say they don't produce these anymore for the stores which I'll explain in later these are your elements um, they are glass coated so they're quartz coat like quartz elements with the coils underneath it so what this is a bit of a safety feature is there are loads of um, electric fires that have the elements exposed now of course you would not be silly enough to go anywhere near one of these when they're on because of the amount of heat they produce but just so if that's just so happened that you were to touch it 
With these ones, you would get seriously burned, but you would not get electrocuted because you would not be touching the actual wire. But what you do is when you switch everything off, you can just give all this a wipe, as is what I've been doing. There are unfortunately little marks on my one that have just come from age because I'm not entirely sure how old this is. I believe this is from the 1990s probably. I wouldn't think it's an 80s model. It could be an 80s one. Uh, but they, they have produced these up until about a few years ago. However, they did tone down the... Um, the amount of electricity they used. Um, I will tell you this one is a two kilowatt one, so 2,000 watt, uh, 1,000 watt per bar, and it's 120 watt to run the bulbs. So there's two 60 watt incandescent bulbs, and they use a special type of bulb called the Fire Glow bulb. It's a normal incandescent bayonet cap, 60 watt, but it has um, red paint over it to give off a fiery effect. And I have brought a bulk pack of those, and I will show you along with these, um, and I'll show you where you can get those from. Um, here in the UK, they phased out incandescent bulbs, but legally uh, they can still sell the fire glow on uh, ones because they are classed as special bulbs, um, so they can be sell. But otherwise, halogen is still available. So to put this one back after you've given it a clean, you basically just hook the two lugs onto the corner. <coughs> and then just give it a bit of a fiddle. It can be a bit of a fiddly task, as you can see. And then it locks itself down. I will also explain some safety about these as well. I'm gonna show you what's actually inside the top where the fire effect takes place. Before you do any maintenance on any of these appliances, make sure you have disconnected the appliance from the mains power. Very dangerous thing to have going whilst you've got it uncovered. Here we go. So, all it really is, there's two bulbs, a glass pane here to give a sort of um, bright effect, and it's these two pin or rotor fans or reflectors, they spin on a little pivot point, and what it does, the heat from the bulbs, the convection currents, spins these around, and they flicker the light. And the faster they spin, the more they produce. Uh, mine, you have one that goes anti-clockwise and another that goes clockwise, and it lights up on the backboard. I'm going to switch this on to show you, and as I say, never do this yourself unless you know exactly what you're doing, and I'll just show you what it actually does. So when you first flick it on, you get the, this comes on by default and you can run the fire effect without switching the actual heater on. So wait a bit of a while. Um, these bulbs do get pretty hot. So always make sure you have let it cool all the way down. And you might now see that the left one and the other one is starting to spin. There's no motors on this or anything. It literally is all the, just, um, it might not spin very well because the light is, uh, the heat is dispersing out. But you can see the one on the right is starting to spin. It's because I haven't got the cover on it. So if you have an electric fireplace, this is exactly the same way it works. It uses heat from the bulbs to spin these rotors around. The left one's being a bit funny. <laughs> Because, probably because, yeah, see, that's what they, it would normally spin around like that. But it's not because uh, I haven't got the lid on. And then what you basically do is when this is on, as you can see. Now there's, so that's 120 watt for the bulb. So all in total, this thing uses 2,120 watts or 2.12 kilowatts. And as you see now with that on, it makes a, like a, a glowing sort of log effect. So you imagine you've got a fireplace, this is what it does. So even though it's called an electric fire, for those who don't actually know, the, there is no fire involved in these. It's just the heat and the effect. Um, with that on, I will now show you the actual heater in operation. So with the flame effect on, uh, you have two switches here, and these control either elements. So 
you have one for the bottom element, the lower one, and this is for the top element. You can flick one on and leave one off, or you can flick both on, you can alternate. Um, I tend to switch one on, and then the next day I'll switch the other one on first. It's just so that both get equal use, and it helps burn off any dust on there um, from either one. Uh, you can have both going together, so it's one kilowatt and one kilowatt, two together, two kilowatts. So, I'm going to show you now what this does. Now, just to do a bit, uh, we're going to do a temperature check in this room. So you can see how powerful this heater is. And just so you know I'm not cheating, I have brought, where is it, one of these with me. This is a, an infrared thermometer with a laser. Now, I'm going to aim it at my radiators. Look. These here, I really don't know why it's saying that that's 73 degrees, oh it's Fahrenheit, why is that gone to Fahrenheit? Right, look, 22 degrees Celsius, these are completely off stone cold, so there is no cheating being done here. And to prove that this actually does work, I'll aim it at the lights. See, down there, 42 degrees, just to let you know that it does actually work. So we're doing no cheating with my reviews. Right, brace yourselves to the heat. So we're gonna flick the lower element on using the left button. Left rocker switch, you might hear a buzz. That's now drawing power. Now, if you've brought one second hand and you first switch it on, I'll always tell people this. You may get the very familiar burning smell from these. There's nothing to worry about. It's just simply dust and other bits burning off the elements and the reflector, it's fine. Personally, myself, I actually love that smell. It's a very vintage smell to me. So not many people who do. And that's the bottom one on. So you can see it glows orange or red hot. If I switch that off, it's a very relaxing environment. Um, I recommend, as well with these, make sure it's in a very spaced out area. So I've cleared everything around it. Um, it's safe where it is because with these, the heat actually comes out forward. There is, behind the element, there is a curved piece of metal screen called a reflector. And that sends the heat out this way, because as we know, heat and hot air rise. Um, so this sends the heat out this way towards you. Now that's just one bar on, and I can tell you I am stood about four foot away from this. And it is pretty hot. It's like standing next to a radiator on full heat, but up close it's even hotter than any radiator could get. So make sure if you have one of these around, you especially please monitor children around these things because there were reasons why these were taken off the market um, and why they were improved over time. The newer ones will only do 1.2 kilowatts, so 600 watt per bar rather than 1000 watt per bar, uh, they have toned things down a bit like my White Knight dryer, as we did in review, I did explain how they brought down the um, the energy in it. I can smell that burning smell, it's very nice. <laughs> but it's, yeah. The only um, time I would say being concerned is if you did see smoke coming off it, but that just means that there's a lot of dust on there. That's why I do recommend before you use it, just give it a clean. So what we're going to do, I have a thermometer set over by my dryer and my room is currently at 24 degrees Celsius or if you're in America, um, 76, if I, no 77 degrees Fahrenheit that's currently at. So I'm going to move this over to where the dryer is and we're going to monitor how the heat changes in this room. Um, yeah, we'll have it over here by the dryer. So there's nothing else on in this room that can produce heat. I've switched off all the lights that I have don't produce that much heat. Now, I'm always very satisfied with having one bar on, but you can use two if you need to. I do use two when the temperature drops below freezing here, then I tend to, but I don't keep it running on that for long. Um, the unfortunate disadvantage to these heaters or any electric heater is that they use a lot of electricity, um, depending on the kilowatt per hour rate in your area. I'm in London, so electricity is a lot more expensive. Um, I've stood about four foot away and I'm already beginning to sweat a little bit from this thing. 
but I use this every night before I go to bed and it warms, it keeps my, warm, my room warm. I would say never leave these unattended either. Um, so if you've got pets around, I would probably say this is a no-no, unless you are certain that they'll keep away from it or you can keep them away from it because even if you were to touch this metal grate at the front, it is still pretty hot. So we'll come back in a bit and we'll see a bit of a temperature difference. So if you've got a smart meter like I have, this is the electric radiant fires out um, well, input whilst using the one single bar. So um, it's using a thousand watt off there and then we have about 420 kilowatts, uh, 420 watts that we're using uh, for all the lights and appliances. Um, and then when we flick the second element on, this will go to this zone here. So it's good if you've got one of these just to let you know how much you're actually using. Again, your kilowatt per hour uh, will be different. Your electricity bill might be slightly different for where you live. Some places cheaper than the others. I'm not using any gas though. So it's been about 15 minutes since we've had that on the one kilowatt setting. And the temperature has gone up by three degrees there. It's actually at 27 degrees. It was at 24, so it's gone up by three degrees. Um, that's just using one. We had the door open a few times as mum's come in, as we know. Um, but we're now going to put this on the maximum setting, which I would normally only do with this um, and, uh, if it was a freezing cold night. Uh, so we flip the next one, and you might hear a little buzz. Uh, the top one always takes a little longer to come on, but you might be able to see that that's glowing there. There you go, it is. It's getting there. So that right now is the maximum input of this electric radiant fire, with the flame effect going as well. The only way I can describe how hot that is right now is like when you first open your oven and that wall of heat hits you. <sighs> Bloody hell. I don't know if you can see my face, but I'm actually starting to break out in a sweat on this. It's that hot. But you know what? When you stood far away from that, that's actually really nice. You might hear it creaking a bit. Got to be careful of keeping the back the camera away from that heat because it would literally destroy the lens on it. Um, but don't be put off by the heat. As I said, you would never be sitting in front of one of these. The safety distance from a heater is normally about three to four foot away. So roughly about here. And that includes anything near it. Never, ever store anything flammable or combustible near one of these heaters, whether it's on above or... Um, so all the stuff I've got around is not actually in contact with the appliance, so that's an area where the heat won't affect and neither will it affect there, but the actual body of the heater itself does get hot. Um, there is a big gap underneath, so as you can see there is no room for anything to touch the ground. That all stays completely cool underneath. Uh, the carpet may get a bit warm, but that's fine, it's nowhere near hot enough to um, do that, but see, for example, if I was to leave this running and that in front of it, then I'm probably asking um, for trouble there. This doesn't get hot at all, and that can there is depressurized. So I know you might have just seen that it was compressed air, but I've let all the air out of it, and there is nothing left in there. Um, but apart from that, it's fine. Um, it has a cable of about two meters, so mine plugs in round here in the back, and it's plugged into the mains. I will tell you with heaters or any kind of um, electric fire, always have it plugged directly into the mains. Never use uh, an extension lead. If you have to use an extension lead, please use one of these. Like I said for the dryer, a surge guard one, because these draw massive amounts of power. You want something that's safe for it to handle that, and uh, if there's anything wrong with the electricity, it will cut it out straight away. Um, but yeah, this is absolutely amazing, this is. Um, I will explain some things at the end, which are actually advantages of owning one of these. 
uh, before you pop off to your local store to grab a fan heater or something, I will explain some advantages and disadvantages of both types of heaters. So with the two kilowatt setting on, I can confirm we have actually hit 30 degrees Celsius in here, or that is equivalent to 83 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> that is pretty hot in here. But that is your recommended safe temperature temperature in a room. If it gets any hotter, you're probably looking at it being uncomfortable. So I am now going to take that back down, switching off one bar and sending it back down to a much more considerable safe temperature. Now, I'm going to keep this on because I obviously want my room to be heated up properly. I'm now going to talk through some of the advantages and disadvantages of heaters, of these ones. So, let's go through the advantages. Now, most people today tend to go for fan heaters because fan heaters are what are most commonly sold in appliance and electronic consumer stores. Now, fan heaters have their advantages like everything, but they also have their downfall. Personal experience, I have had three fan heaters in this house, and I wasn't overall, overall impressed with them. I wasn't overly impressed. The main thing with a fan heater that you will not get with this heater at all, with an electric radiant fire, is noise. If you listen to that, it's virtually silent. Even the uh, rotor spinning doesn't make any sound. The only noise you get from this is the flick of the switch and just a slight buzzing that the element makes as it comes on. So you can run this thing late at night. I've had this thing going as late as about three o'clock in the morning when I've decided just to quickly get up for about half an hour and switch it on. With a fan heater, you get the noise and vibration from it. And I have had fan heaters in here that have made a considerable amount of noise, even when placed on a pillow. The main thing is this is producing pure heat, or as the name of it suggests, radiant heat, because it's radiating heat out towards you and it's just heat coming off the electrical elements. With a fan heater, you get air blown at you, so it's basically like a, a massive hairdryer. The disadvantage with that is that it tends, fan heaters take air in from the back, draw it from the fan over the elements, what that does, it actually removes the moisture out of the air, so it's blowing dry air at you. Now, I suffer from sensitive skin, and where I work, um, sometimes on the door, I have to stand there to monitor customers coming in and out. I stand beneath a three kilowatt fan heater, which is an overhead, like a, it's a curtain heater, so what you find over doors of shops and like offices. I can tell you that no more than about 10 minutes underneath that, my skin already feels dry. I come home and I have like dry skin around my nose and I now figure that it's that heater that was causing it. This doesn't produce that. This just heats air and scent. It just heats, it's just basically, it's not even air it's heating. It's heating the metal behind and sending all that heat off the element towards you, but it's not blowing it. It's just naturally sending it out. So that's what I find with this. It doesn't dry the air in my room. Um, any heater you have, regardless of what it is, unless you get a gas heater, a Cali gas heater, but they're long gone really. If you do still have one, I mean they're right, but to be honest, I wouldn't trust one as far as I could throw one. Um, I've never really trusted gas appliances, to be honest. Um, personal experience, I think they're quite dangerous, especially with carbon monoxide and whatnot. Now, these heaters, the disadvantages of course, is that you know you have this open cage here that gets hot, um, so if you have got pets running around and, and children that wouldn't, you know, please make sure they know of the safety. You know, if you have a pet, then try and keep them away from this. Well, I would not recommend that if you do have a pet. Um, if so, keep it behind a screen. You can get like a fire grill that they put around fireplaces to put around this if you so wish to. Now, the newer ones, as I said, are, uh, there are actually a load of these that are sold. Um, I found quite a few, including a three bar one. Uh, now, I would not say that I've seen this one, um, but Dimplex are your main provider of these because they have been known for ages actually of selling these heaters, but uh, they are made by other brands. Now, another um, thing, 
Heaters will use a lot more electricity than anything else because they have to use all that power. So de depending on how long you run it for, as how long you'll how much you'll pay for it. I tend not to use this for about more than two hours. Um, I wait for my heating to go off on the timer, and then once the heating goes off, I then use this. Some people do use these as um, substitutes. So if your gas goes, you have some of this. This one, one thing uh, you can use them for. Just make sure it's regularly serviced. And I'll show you the bulbs we have in those, um, the fire glow bulbs. These are the special bulbs they use in these electric fires and fireplaces. So this is by Status. It's called a fire glow bulb. I have a pack of 10 in here. Now I've already put uh, two new replacements in here, or one new replacement after this pop the old one. This is how it looks. When you put these in, um, you will get a very foul smell of the lacquer, the paint burning off it. Um, but it's normal after about a minute or so it clears. But you'll get they'll start off looking very like blood red, and then it goes down to this nice orange colour. If I flick the main light off, you can see how that looks. It's very nice ambient setting. I've got other little lights around here. But it's nice and relaxing. It's if you like retro things like me, vintage stuff, this is perfect. Because um, as I said, this is the Brockenhurst model, but the Yeominster has gold detailing to it, as well as like gold um, little poles on here. So each of them have their own different look. But the elements glowing, I personally like seeing the elements glow. Now the camera shows it up as being very bright, but it isn't actually that bright. Um, it's about that bright, more or less. But it shows it as being more pinkish on here. It's basically like a lava orange colour. It's very nice though. I would recommend if you if you feel comfortable, I mean, choosing heaters, it's all out of your personal comfort. Some people prefer fan heaters, some people prefer these ones. I like this because it's quiet, can have it on whenever I want, and it's a nice little decoration for this room. Honestly saying, it's the best thing, I, apart from my sofa bed, it is the best thing I got for this room to have. Uh, I could, I've never fought with it in any way. It's even, it's it's light enough to carry around if you need to carry it like to, I mean, the menu meant to stay in one place. So these are the current electric radiant fires that you can buy on the market today. There are some that are coming from eBay and other sites, but most of these are new. So starting off at the top, you have, um, let's see if we can actually arrange this by price. So you've got all your options here, what you'd like to set up to the prices, more filters, um, sort by price, low to high. What can you get cheapest? So, first of all, you start off with these ones. These are what you'll find on uh, the market today. You have these quartz heaters. They're the same sort of elements as what I've got. I said they're 800 watt, 400 watt per bar. Or this one is, yeah, £8.70. I would not recommend going for something that cheap, though. Um, I would recommend spending a bit more. So you got these ones here. There's a timer flame effects one. These are the newer ones I was talking about, the Premier. You can buy it for twenty three sixty nine, and then the warm light is your standard classic one, twelve hundred watt though. So that's six hundred watt per bar. They have toned that down. That did used to be two kilowatt. That's a generic design. You have a decorative one by Brubaker LED flame effect, and then twenty nine ninety nine second hand one just like my one electric fire with coal effect two bar Berry UK. Um, there's many more Dimplex. There we are. Cut. That's the bed for the top light fire effect you can pause this if you need to um, again this one down here the 1.8 kilowatt one 1800 watt the, this is one you'll find by Deu and fine elements also make this one uh, so we're getting uh, see refurbished ones you can trust if it's been refurbished by qualified people uh, pull cord switch this is the one you normally find in some bathrooms in like public restrooms and then if we go to Dimplex, I'll show you this one here. There's a really nice one. So here's the Yeo Minster one. Um, 8324 from Trading Depot. Yes, these decorative ones are quite expensive. It's mainly because of their deco. But it's just similar to the one I've got. That's the pictures of it. Um, this is a 1200 watt one. So not that powerful. 
1200 watt is basically how powerful my one is with one bar enabled. You mainly find them on eBay. If you want one just like mine, you best look on eBay. I got mine for a total of £72.50. I think I paid 54 I paid 54 it, yeah, 55 and I paid about £20 for the postage, and it arrived within two days. There was a three-bar one that I wanted to show on here. Um, so I thought I'd screen record the results rather than putting them in, but I will link some of them in. Um, so Electric Radiant Fire. This is the one, Dimplex Lindhurst. This is a very nice looking one with a hood to it, but quite a bit of a price, £295 from flames.co.uk. You can compare prices though, see, look, this is where it comes from, 349 from Radiant Fireplaces. But you know with this one you're getting it from somewhere you trust. Because you do have to be careful with these. Um, if you do buy one second hand, just absolutely make sure that everything is alright with it. If you can, go, and, I mean, I know it might not be possible with the coronavirus situation and social distancing, but if you do buy it second hand, at least try and get a range of viewing or have the seller send you videos or pictures of it working so that you know you're um, getting your money's worth here. So this is all your options you can choose on this site. This is a three bar one. And it is, as you see here, the Dimplex Lindhurst gives you the choice of low heat, two elements at 1.3, yeah, 1332 watts, or high heat, three elements, 1998 watts. I think it's basically two kilowatts, that is. Settings of electronic temperature control. Now, my one does not have a thermostat to it, so I it does not shut off when it gets um, to the desired temperature. You just flip that off by yourself. But like all appliances, it will have a thermal cutout for you, so if it does overheat, it will shut itself off. So safety is a concern with these, but they are fitted with safety fuses. So I have a second... Uh, perspective view review of this electric rain fire from uh, someone else who uses it in their home. My mother would like to have her input. Yes, it's very warm. Notice the difference when you come into this room compared to the other uh, rooms of the house because we've got central heating. But when I come into this room, it is obviously more warmer, and obviously the um, appearance of the heater is very attractive and cozy. So yes, very good. She had no problems with it, apart from the electricity bill, of course. Yes. But that's that's the only only disadvantage to these things. Um, it's safe for a place like us. We haven't got any pets or children running around. Um, as I did say, there was a reason why a lot of these were pulled off the market, but they have made them a lot safer now to use. Even though more people go for the full wall electric fires now, they go for not just these ones. Thank you. So just to make a wrap on this, um, an overall conclusion, it is fantastic. It does everything I expected. In fact, it does a little bit more than what I expected from an electric radiant fire or a heater. Um, you, I could have chosen a cheap standard heater like what we looked at on the internet, but I wanted something more decorative for my room and it's much more vintage. Um, these have gone back as far as the 80s, but I'm, I've tried emailing Dimplex to see if they can tell me whereabouts this was made or what year but there's no serial number on my one so we, we think it's between the 80s and 90s so um if you do have one say in uh, one of your family's house that you know just give it a go during the winter sit in front of it um straying away from the reviews about this there is a comical video i'm going to be making of this um to tell you how hot it is um it's not relevant to the review but this thing gets so hot, I can actually roast a marshmallow on it. I actually did roast marshmallows in front of it. Um, so I'll do that as a little video, because no one's actually done a video like that on YouTube. And I'll do it safely. But overall, guys, I'll just say, it's, I mean, it's cold outside now, about 4 degrees. But this thing just keeps my room lovely and warm. Um, so I've explained all the safety about it. And if you're interested, by all means, you can look on eBay. 
Um, anywhere will have one. If you want the exact same model as mine, it is the Dimplex Brockenhurst model BRK20 electric radiant fire. You can search for that one or the Yeominster one. But if you want a two kilowatt one um, and you see it, it online, just ask the service to send you a picture of the rating sticker at the back. Um, and that's that. If you want the fire glow bulbs, I will link them in my description. Um, I bought them from from Amazon for £10, I did. £9.99 for a 10 pack. Um, they will be going cheap because as I said, incandescent bulbs are obsolete now in the UK. I think they're actually not legal to sell, but uh, halogen bulbs will be around. It has to be a bulb that can produce heat, so LED bulbs will not work in these. I hope that helps help you as much as it's helped me, and uh, I hope it will help you stay warm in this winter. And I'm sweating right now from sitting in front of this, as you can see. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for all the support on my reviews. There's lots more to come, including something on the men's um, health and beauty side. I hope you enjoyed that one. Thank you very much for watching guys and don't forget to stay safe and keep it supreme and go with the flow.